Welcome to Activity-Based Learning with Mike and Ken. My name is Jennifer. Today's activity is called Euro Traffic Circle. It doesn't involve a lot of props and can be done with groups of a lot of different sizes. There's great examples in the video of the groups trying to work through this problem in a quicker and quicker pace. So enjoy! Um, traffic circle. Uh, a traffic circle in Europe is some it's this device that was implemented to allow traffic to move through it very fluidly. Um, if you've ever been to Boston, they've done a good job of putting in these traffic circles. Burlington, Vermont, however, has not done a good job with traffic circles. Uh, people come to the traffic circle that's supposed to allow you just to slip right through and stop and wait. And you can't really sort out who's your left and who's next and who's this and who's that. So there are some problems with them. Your task is to identify a partner across from you and in the shortest amount of time possible cross through the traffic circle both partners touching some part of their body down inside of the circle at the same time and ending up in their partner's space. Does that make sense? You are going to cross through the circle touching some part of your body down at the same time as your partners into the circle ending up in their space, trying to do this in the shortest amount of time possible. If you have a collision, <laughs> if you have a collision, you need to start the process over again. A collision means that any two people bump into one another. Okay? That make sense? So in your small groups, uh, I would come up with a strategy and at your leisure, um, I would invite somebody in the group to time your group. Okay? Whenever you're ready. Okay, so we have. You're directly across from me, so we need to find some. I don't understand. So right. we're going to start opening up. Yeah. Right. So why don't we go? Why don't we go? So why don't you do? Why don't you do a slow motion so test to yeah, see so what you're talking about? Basically, Let me see. we go counterclockwise. So her and I would go as quickly as we can. Then you would go with your partner as quickly as you can. But then you say you can touch the part of your body at the same time. Right, so, right, so, right, so, she would go in, so we go in and go like this, and then the next, right, then you guys would go on the path, and then you guys would go on the path, and then, you know what I'm saying, and then you two, right. Okay, wait, wait, let me, I'll say go. Go. And so if you have a familiarity with traffic circles, um, you, are, you have a bit of you know, prior knowledge. You have a, an idea of how you can get through this. Okay? So we've been talking about uh, trust and conflict, and this is still about commitment. So in this situation, what is the commitment that we're making? I left it up to you to do this as fast as you can. Not faster than the other team, not fast as I decide, but as fast as you can. So, you know, this group was doing it in, you know, three, four seconds. This group we had 12 people. They went down to eight seconds. I don't know what times you had. Two and a half seconds. Two and a half seconds. <laughs> Sweet. Perfect. But, yeah, but we're not competing. So, one of the things... One of the things that's kind of a it, it, it's kind of a double-edged sword with uh, you know commitment, especially when we're talking in the camp environment, is you know who decides the level of success? You know who decides what fun is? Who decides you know what's going to happen next? Is it the the kids in the group? I'm talking about with obviously within some type of parameters. Um, is it the counselors? Is it the administrators? Uh, I was a middle school teacher for a bunch of years, and nothing drove me more crazy than the school board deciding what it is that we needed to be doing and what the definition of, uh, you know, teaching was, what the class schedule was going to look like, without being in the classroom. You know, so the cabin counselors, the recreation staff have a pretty good idea of what needs to happen, and they're pretty committed to that. And when somebody else comes in and says, you know what, you need to do it this way, you need to do it faster, you need to do it better, you need to do it more efficiently without that prior knowledge, it causes conflict. Yeah. 
So there's, there's a lot of ramifications to somebody from the outside kind of dropping the hammer and saying, this is what the definition of commitment is. This is what the definition of efficiency is. This is how we're going to do this. This is how much stuff you get to use today for this project. You know, there's got to be a back and forth. And it needs to, you know, the conflict is an important role. The arts and crafts director needs to be able to say, yes, but I need this amount to do this and respect the budgetary constraints of the organization as well. So that's what we're talking about as far as commitment. Yes, sir.